Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here or you've been sitting in the back row, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget that bell icon. Make sure you set it to all. That way you know every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro, an ad will be played. Right after the first story, an ad will be played. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. I am 17. I've been living alone for a while now. My brother, whom is my guardian, comes by the house maybe once a month. The house is a duplex. It used to be a house, but it was split into top and basement, so the whole house is basically like one house, but with two parts. We are living together. Walls and floors are thin. I can hear conversations. Not combos, but the sound waves travel throughout the house. I used to stay up all night, so I got a hang of their schedule. They wouldn't start getting up until around 12. Then, when I started sleeping in again, they're up around 9 a.m. and walking back and forth above the room I'm in, so I wake up here and there. When I finally do get up and start cleaning, they go quiet. Then, as I am in the kitchen, I can hear someone go from the living room to standing directly above me. I move from room to room, yet there is always someone following me and standing directly above me. Whenever I hear them standing above me, I move rooms. Then I hear, she can hear us. They speak pretty quietly, but whenever it comes to whatever about me, they speak pretty loud and clear. It is a lot of she. She should be going to school. What is she doing? She's cleaning the yard. Did she leave yet? These are all times I had spoken out loud to someone about what I'll be doing. I never really speak out loud as I do live alone. Whenever I get phone calls, I make sure to put my headphones in because once I start talking, it's like they quieten down to listen in to whom I'm talking to. Who's she talking to? She's on the phone with someone. That one really freaked me out. I just don't know what to do because now I am having nightmares that I am being watched. I feel scared to be in my own home. Why would some 45-year-old geezers be so interested in a 17-year-old girl's life? Seems a little freaking strange to me. Like they ain't got nothing better to do but to be creeps. Caution. There are mentions of assault, rape, and threat to life. Listening discretion is highly advised. Okay, so me, my mom, and my sister moved into a house in 2019. It was going fine up until last year. Where we live, there's just one laneway up to the seven houses. All the houses are attached and small, and each one has a driveway, but some people just park on the path. Our neighbor's son, 20 or 21 years old, I don't know his exact age, has a car. He races out of the driveway, not giving a damn if there's a car or person in the way. And then he speeds down the road like a lunatic. This is only the beginning. The couple, who are older than my parents, live across the street. And they are really lovely and haven't done anything to anyone. The man has a car and a van. The car is in the driveway and the van is on the path. This kid escapes the van and leaves all these scratch marks all over it. He also threatens to blow it up. Before this, though, he beat the shit out of the man so bad that he ended up in the hospital. And the woman had a brain bleed a couple of months before this happened. So they went through a lot in just a few months. Since then, he's been having a go at them. This was early last year. Around August or September, his car caught on fire, and he got a new one. He set his own car on fire, and he set it on fire right outside of the houses. The ground was black and charred afterwards, and there's still a huge and noticeable mark from it. 
The walls of the houses are very thin. He shouts a lot and bangs on the walls. Mine and my sister's bedroom is where he bangs on the wall the most. We assume his room is the one behind ours. He does it throughout the day and even at night. And it's so loud. And when he shouts, it sounds like it's coming from our house. The next part is where the last two triggers come in. Just be mindful. A couple of weeks ago, my sister and her two friends were in our room listening to music while my mom was downstairs. I was away then and wasn't there for this. There's a bang on the wall and this butthole shouts out, I'm going to kill and rape you and mentions my sister's name. My sister and her friends go downstairs to my mom who heard it as well. My sister was crying and extremely scared and my mom was furious. My mom, sister, and her friends went to the police station and all gave statements about what had happened. The policewoman said they can press charges, but it will take up to one to two years for anything to happen. They can file the incident so it's on record, and that's what they did. And if he says anything towards my sister again, then they are to call the police straight away. He is well known to the police. He's been pulled over many times for speeding, and they've received a lot of complaints from our neighbors about him. The night this happened, my sister slept in my mom's bed with her, and my mom kept a knife beside the bed just in case anything happened, which is understandable, seeing as what he had said. The morning after, my mom was getting ready to go out, and she said she saw him get into his car, but before he did, he looked at the house and smirked. My dad came up the next day. He works in a different part of the country, so we only see him a few times a month. And it helped my sister feel more safe with him around. My dad is a big guy and can look scary at times. Not to us, obviously, because we grew up with him, but to people we don't know. He's a pacifist and a really good guy, but when someone does or says something to his daughters, he gets really pissed. My mom told the neighbors on the other side of us and the ones across the street, and they were disgusted and horrified. My mom's friend is well known around the area and said she'll spread the word about what he did. Everyone is disgusted, and many people have said that if he does anything, they'll be on my sister's side and protect her. My mom messaged his mom about it, and this woman had the audacity to say that they weren't at home at that time. Yes, they were. And said their son never said that and never uttered my sister's name. The parents are just as deranged as the son. And I swear to God, I better not hear anyone telling me this story's fake. My sister is a kind and loving girl and has never lied about anything to this extent. And she never would. All she was doing was listening to music with her friends. She's absolutely terrified that he's going to do something to her. He's a psychopath, and I hope someday he gets his comeuppance. I have been living in my current apartment since late 2020. In October of 2021, a tenant moved downstairs from my unit and it has been hell. She smokes cigarettes and weed at all hours of the day, and that smell travels up to the second floor into my unit. I've gotten door drafts and air purifiers, which don't help that much. There's been a lot of ongoing issues with this neighbor from hell for the past two years. This is a small apartment complex with nine units total and an even smaller parking lot. There are a total of nine parking spaces, one for each tenant. The neighbor from hell has visitors that come every day at all hours of the day and night, occupying our parking spaces. There have been days that her visitors are occupying three to four parking spaces and even times when they block our cars. After many complaints from all the tenants, the management solution was getting a contract with a tow truck company and setting up parking stickers for tenants' cars, which we still had to pay for. Towing truck didn't help much because they take hours to come when you call them, and a few times that they have come to tow a visitor car, she comes out with crocodile tears saying, 
I didn't know giving any excuse in the book, which ends with cars not getting towed. They move the car, wait a few minutes, and then they park right back in the parking lot. The other issue has been her visitors in the parking lot. When they visit, they party and they litter. They leave their trash all over the ground that includes food, alcohol cans, used condoms, and blunts on the ground. When there's a huge dumpster on this lot, I guess leaving the trash on the ground is acceptable for them. Another issue is when a neighbor from hell is babysitting her many grandchildren. They are left unsupervised. They roam around the common areas, go up to the second and third floor, and play unsupervised in the common areas and the parking lot. Some of the things they do is get on top of tenants' cars. They jump from car to car to the next and so on and so forth. They hide behind cars and wait until somebody is pulling out of the space to run behind the car, play baseball with rocks. They also took all the tomatoes from a tenant's garden and threw them at our cars and onto the ground. They are also always yelling and screaming when visiting and leaving trash, food, and broken toys on the ground of the parking lot and common areas, including hallways. The other main issue with this neighbor from hell are the parties and loud music being played for long hours after quiet time. Neighbor from hell has parties almost every weekend, way past 11 p.m., which is past the lease and city ordinance. The apartment building is old, so there's not good insulation, nor is it properly soundproofed. When Neighbor from Hell plays her stereo, I can hear music, including the bass, in my entire unit. It gets so loud that the vibrations are felt in the floors, walls, furniture, and my bed. I work from home a few days a week, and there are times that she cranks up the stereo during the day and plays music for an average of 8 to 10 continuous hours. The music is so loud that it affects my ability to work, sleep, or even enjoy my apartment. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells because I don't know when the music or party will start. The loud noise and party have negatively affected me with an increased anxiety and migraines. Myself and other tenants for the past two years have sent multiple complaints to management about this neighbor from hell with pictures and video evidence of multiple lease violations. For the most part, management response has not been the best. They give neighbor from hell lease violation notices, which does nothing because she repeats the same things. Once neighbor from hell receives a lease violation, notice. She would confront tenants about the notice and ask who made the complaint against her. I made the mistake of asking her directly to turn off the music once on a weekday at 1 a.m. and other times as well when it's been past the 10-hour mark of music playing nonstop. For the most part, she knows it's me making noise complaints. The last time I asked the neighbor from hell to turn her music down, she got in my face and became verbally combative towards me, which I inform management about. I've tried everything I can from my end, from noise-canceling headphones, different types of earplugs, noise machines, getting rugs and those Velcro soundproof things for the wall at my own expense, with no success because the vibration and bass can be heard and felt. After multiple complaints to management, they decided to not renew her lease. Her lease ended at the end of September, with an end date in sight, I renewed my lease. I guess I was naive in thinking things would get better. The loud parties and music continued to the point that happened multiple times during the week. Management response after multiple complaints was that they'd done all that they could do with the intent of non-renewal and they would only proceed with eviction was with a police report. I expressed my concern with her combativeness, but the response stayed the same. End of March was my breaking point, when I was awakened at 1 a.m. because of neighbor from hell. I decided that was a good time to start partying. I took video evidence as usual, but around 2 a.m. I'd had enough, so I called the police and asked to stay anonymous. The police came about 10 minutes after making that call. They knocked on her door and told her to turn off the stereo. Fifteen minutes after the police left, neighbor from hell went up to the second floor to my door 
and started hitting it with her fist and kicking it while screaming verbal threats because I called the police on her. She then started hitting my walls, went back to her unit, and then started hitting the ceiling with a broom. I have cameras inside my unit, so her aggression was recorded. I talked to the police the next day, and they said I could do a harassment order again with her, but that would require putting my information on file, which I am hesitant on doing because I did not want more issues. I live by myself and she has many visitors coming in and out. That still makes me feel unsafe. I sent all of my evidence to management and included what the police told me. Management then finally proceeded to serve the neighbor from hell with a seven day notice to quit. Before she got served, I stayed with a friend because I did not feel safe and was told by another tenant that neighbor from hell was hiding around the dumpster area with two guys looking into my unit. We are all close, the tenants in the building, and they are all aware of what had happened. I decided to come back to my place because I have a cat and I don't like leaving her alone at night. After the neighbor from hell got served, she called management and per their report, neighbor from hell wanted to cooperate and did not want any more trouble with me and that she did not want to go to court because she did not want to be homeless nor lose her Section 8 voucher. Neighbor from Hell informed them that her move-out date would be May 1st. I was given the option to break my lease as well, which I still have not given management a response about my lease since I thought I could wait until May 1st. Well, it's May 1st, and I decided to reach out to management asking for an update because I didn't see any moving movement from neighbor from L. Management informed me that now the tenant has proposed a move out date before June 1st because the apartment she found is on hold. A tenant told me that she told him she was waiting on some money to pay the broker fee. I think all she is saying is pure bullshit. After a lot of communicating with management today about them not informing me beforehand, and wanting a guarantee that she will in fact move out. And what was their plan to enforce the move out? They stated that neighbor from hell has an open court case with them, but that a court date has not been assigned. They stated that neighbor from hell decided to move out. And if she does not move by that proposed date, they will continue to pursue the eviction. But I feel like this could go on for months and that she will continue to come up with excuses to extend her time here. I like my place, especially the rent price. It's the only thing that has kept me here. I have the means to move. I just would rather not use that money if I don't have to. And I don't want to pay a couple hundred more on rent someplace else, but I've also had enough. It's been two and a half years of living hell with her combativeness, threats, party, music, parking lot issues, littering, Issues with her visitors and the smell that is always in my unit. Not to mention the emotional distress I feel with my safety being threatened. And even though I have safety measures in place, it's exhausting to always have my guard up. Management has been horrible in handling this situation. I don't know. I guess I'm looking for some opinions on the matter. What do you think? There is a man on my street that I'm having the most odd, unpleasant, and concerning one-sided interaction with, and I need some advice. Last year, I wasn't home much. When I was, I had the most odd thing occur. Every single time I was doing front yard work, a man would ride by on a bike. I'm not being hyperbolic. If I was outside, regardless of time or day, he would appear. Again, I wasn't home much, this made it easier to notice the pattern. Out of all the six times he rode by, he split directly at me. Twice I was in my driveway, mere feet away. The fifth time it sent dread all through me. My intuition screamed something isn't right here. In my opinion, that was two times too many. I have a history of avoiding anxiety-provoking situations. Yeah, I'm a wuss. 
The fifth time, I went to the police station and said something is off with this individual. Can you speak to him? I was told by that police officer yes, and then said the next time it happens to call him directly. I get home from the police station where I'd been rather emotional over it. It's 10 p.m.-ish, and he rides by again. At 10 p.m., in his baseball hat and sunglasses, and spits in my direction, right as I'm staring directly at him. At this point, I was pissed. I had this crazy surge in anger. I get into my car and follow him, unaware he lived only a block away. I get out of my car, and I startle him as his back was to me by saying, why are you spitting at me? I kept my tone collected, but I was fuming. Uh, hi, um, it's a coincidence. I'm less speechless at that. You're beautiful. Look, I know you're intentionally trying to get my attention. Why are you being such an asshole? I'm not. That's a mean accusation to make. No accusation. That's the truth. You just look so angelic. Too innocent to say such mean things. I'm standing there speechless, thinking... I bet this is not what I should have done. Do you smoke weed? You want to come in? I have things planned. I must pass. Can I give you a hug? Again, I'm standing here speechless. You insulted me. Can't I at least have a hug? I turn around to walk to my car. You didn't even ask me my name. Okay, what's your name? Matthew. Don't you like it? It's biblical. Sure, whatever. Well, I'm leaving town. Please stop writing by the way you do. Now I'm back at home and have been doing yard work. About a month after being back in town, the temperatures warm up and I get to work. He starts riding by again. This guy is like 40 pounds overweight, yet all he seems to do is cruise around my town. The past weekend, he's spit at me twice. I've seen him out of the corner of my eye. I just went to the police station and rehashed all of this and the things that were added because it was starting to intimidate me. I politely ask him to cease the behavior. I don't know how to handle the situation. This officer I spoke with said people spit all the time. They can't do anything about it. I responded asking, can't there be some type of mediation? Maybe this guy needs to be looked into. It's not normal to spit at women twice in one day and then tell them that they are pretty. Invite them in to do drugs. To then go back to a behavior that same woman asked them to politely and firmly stop. He said no. He's always there. Every time I'm outside, minus twice. Regardless of time of day, he bikes by. So we're talking like 9 out of 11 times and he spit at me 3 or 4. I see it out of the corner of my eye. I refuse to acknowledge him. It's without question intentional. Fear and intimidation is starting to evolve into rage. He's taking up too much of my thoughts. He ruins my mood when it's good. At this point, it makes me sick to my stomach just seeing him. How do I address this? I was raised to see spitting at someone intentionally was hostile, not okay, or intimidating. Yet, the police officer asked like it was the most normal thing to deal with, that it shouldn't faze me at all. I don't know what to say to this person. Being men, most men realize it's intimidating. Most men realize the woman is going to feel uncomfortable. I need advice on what to say to this individual because it can't continue. It's getting to me, and I'm going crazy. I'm not in the wrong, right? Wouldn't most people in my situation feel similar? Men knowing it's wrong. He knows he's being kind of deviant, right? Any advice on how to assert myself appropriately would be appreciated because I'm stumped on what to do. Before I get started, I will take any advice on the situation. I have a horrible, violent, and dangerous neighbor who the police are doing nothing about. I would love any advice. I'm just tired 
and anxious all the time. We are in England. We cannot move at the moment due to financial reasons. We are renting our place, and the neighbor owns his house. Our landlord is no help. She's terrified of him to the point where she won't speak to the police. My household consists of four adults, one teenager, two children, age four and two, and also two cats. The two children are my niece and nephew, whose parents live separately, but for childcare reasons are most often a part of the household. The following is a documentation of the reoccurring harassment and abuse experienced by my family from our own next door neighbor, Redacted. The incidents of harassment and abuse have been ongoing for almost half a decade since 2020. This harassment has been escalating in violence and even threats. The harass from Redacted is racially motivated, i.e., making derogatory comments about my family's dark skin tone and misogynistic i.e. making comments about my mother's and sister's appearance and the clothes they wear. I believe these incidents to be hate crimes. Unfortunately, the response from the police has been very dismissive, despite the harassment occurring for four years in our occupation with the police advice. Under police advisement, we have built a large fence in the back garden to increase privacy, installed many security cameras with audio, moved our wall fan that was causing noise issues, avoided walking past his house, privacy film to upstairs windows, front garden fence between our house. Nothing has ever been resolved from police involvement. Neither has Redacted faced any consequences for his actions, emboldening him to continue in vile actions. What I've done is document the specific dates of the harassment, abuse, and threats. I must also emphasize the mental stress and anxiety caused from the ongoing harassment from Redacted. Several people in my household are vulnerable, including children and myself with a history of mental illness, which I am taking medication for. We are scared to live in our own home, be in our garden, and leave the house. The situation is unbearable, and a resolution must be found for the health and safety of my family. With this latest attack, the brick thrown in our window could have easily hit one of the children who frequently play near those windows. 16th of July, 2020. The neighbor took a photo of my mother and went to my father's shop to tell him to make her wear a headscarf in the garden. Police were informed. The 16th of July, 2020. My father asked the neighbor if the photo was deleted, and the neighbor responded with explicit language. Nothing of yours better come into my garden, and alluding to killing our cat. The neighbor threatened to hit his car into his own wall and tell the police my father did it. The 21st of September, 2020. Neighbor basically struck my father, then went home. We called the police to inform them and let them know we had a witness. However, due to the reputation of Redacted, the witness refused to cooperate as he was scared for his own safety. The police advised CCTV cameras be put in place, which we immediately did. 24th of September, 2020, Redacted was harassing my mother, smiling and singing at her as she was walking home. My mother felt uncomfortable and went inside the house to avoid him. 2nd of January, 2021. Neighbor accused us of throwing things in his garden. The police then disturbed us to investigate while I was working from home, causing inconvenience. 17th of January, 2021. Mentally ill sister-in-law was staying with us due to her psychosis. We were in our garden with two children under the age of two. My brother, father of said children, talked to the children through the upstairs bedroom window. The neighbors shouted up at my brother, threatening him and demanding him come outside and fight. This incident led to my father getting an audio confession of previous assault. Police said the audio was not usable as the neighbor's face is not visible. 22nd of June, 2021. Younger brother, age 12, 
was looking for our cat in our garden. There was a gap between the fence and the wall where the cat can get stuck. When the neighbor shouted at him and made fun of his speech impediment, my brother calmly explained that he was looking for the cat. The neighbor proceeded to shout, swear, and make threats towards my brother. My sister, age 17, got involved to say we are looking for the cat, and the neighbor proceeded to call her a tramp and black, etc. This was a racially motivated abuse, intended as slurs against my sister's darker skin tone. The neighbor also threatened my sister by saying he knows where she works. He went on to warn her not to stand next to any windows. That was a threat to her life. The neighbor went on to call my niece, who was only one years old, a racially motivated slur. There is a recording of this incident. However, it is very poor audio quality. 17th of May, 2023. Neighbor parked at the bottom of our house's driveway at 12 p.m. Knocked on his car window while he was parked outside our house and stared at my sister as she walked into her house. A grown man attempting to intimidate a young woman. Anytime any of the occupants of our house walks past Redacted House and he is in the garden, he stares and smiles another form of intimidation. The 13th of May, 2023. No caller ID calls to my father since 4 a.m. The neighbor parked outside my father's shop and stared inside to intimidate my father. We have CCTV footage of this harassment. The 1st of June, 2023. The neighbor called the police with a false claim of domestic disturbance at 2 a.m., causing the police to raid our house, waking my family up in the middle of the night and causing distress for all, but especially my little brother and myself as I struggle with anxiety and this event caused a whole panic attack. At this time, I was recovering from a suicide attempt. The 2nd of June, 2023. The neighbor went to my father's shop and threatened and intimidated my father. There is CCTV footage of this event and two witnesses who were too scared to speak to the police. At this time, we put privacy screens on my sister's bedroom window because, redacted, had been standing in his garden, staring through the window, an act he has been doing since she was 16. The 4th of July, 2023. 10 a.m., redacted, allegedly, threw a brick into my garden and shattered the glass table outside. There is CCTV evidence of this event, showing the brick coming from the neighbor's garden. The non-emergency line, 101, was called and informed. Approximately 1 p.m., my sister opened her bedroom window to record the neighbor swearing at her, including racially motivated insults. The neighbor threatened to kill my whole family and said his sister would come to beat me up and my little sister. The police were called, but no one came. Approximately 10 minutes later, his mother and sister knocked on our door, shouting and warning us, you're asking for trouble. The neighbor threatened us, telling us to watch what happens and intimidating us. The neighbor put on a balaclava and stole our camera. The 4th of July, 2023, approximately 8 or 8.30 p.m., the neighbor's older brother, who does not live next door, came to our door to ask us not to call the police and to come to a different resolution and ask us to move our wall fan, which we did on that same day. The brother also said he would talk to the neighbor about his behavior. There is a recording of him saying he doesn't doubt it was his brother who threw the brick. He also described us as good neighbors and said we never had any issues when he lived there. The 8th of July, 2023. While my father was installing a new CCTV camera, the neighbor harassed him, saying, if you put cameras back up, you won't be able to live here anymore and then he makes a threat. We were advised by police to put the cameras up. We called the police this day, who once again told us there was nothing they could do. The 1st of September, 2023. The neighbor was banging on a shared bedroom wall, shouting abuse. The neighbor went into his garden and threatened my younger sister again. There is recorded audio and video evidence 
with his face visible, of this incident, and the police were called. The police arranged a phone call with my younger sister for 10 p.m. the following day, but the police never called for a follow-up on the incident. The 10th and 11th of March. Redacted. Stopped my father on Ellers Road outside Paul's Super Safe and said, Let's be Muslims, possibly in reference to neighbors being held in a high regard within the Islamic religion. He then asked my father to tell our landlords to sell him the house we are living in. They refused to sell the house, so this could possibly be the reason for his harassment. When we originally sold the house to our landlords, Redacted told my father he should have sold it to him instead. He has also previously asked our landlords to sell him the house. The 30th of March, 2024. 1.30 p.m., my mother was playing outside with my nephew. The neighbor stood, standing at both of them from his upstairs window, and was possibly filming, but my mother was scared to look and escalate the situation. The 5th of April, 2024. 10 a.m., redacted, went to my father's shop, located on redacted, wearing a balaclava and threatened to kill him, me, my sister, and my mother. He followed my father to work in the morning watching him when he left the house and got into his face to intimidate him. We have CCTV footage of this incident. My father informed him that he would call the police, causing him to run away. We have further CCTV footage of him in his garden with the exact same outfit on, sans balaclava. The police were called and they scheduled a phone call at 3 p.m. on Monday on the 8th. The 18th of April, 2024. 9.30 a.m. We hear a loud noise outside. My sister checks outside and we cannot see anything. Then a brick is thrown through our living room window. This brick could have hit any member of the family, including two young children, ages four and two, and pets. The police took almost an hour to arrive. The police were shown the CCTV footage neighbor's face is not visible, but said they cannot do anything at the moment. From the CCTV, we can see that the brick was thrown twice, and then the culprit ran across the road to avoid being caught. Simultaneously, a black car pulled out of Redacted's driveway. For the reason we believe, Redacted orchestrated the attack via a third party. This is plausible as he had threatened our lives earlier in the month on the 5th of April. Redacted is also an individual who has been in and out of prison. His own brother warned us that he is not afraid of going back. He's often fighting with people in the street as well as yelling loud threats when he is on the phone in his own home. The police said they would be back in touch Saturday the 19th. 19th of April, 2024, at 2117, Redacted called our landlady and said, Bring your tenant to me. He has to agree to take the cameras down and a few other conditions, otherwise I will do it again. Our landlady called us immediately after to let us know what he said. We called the police to let them know of this latest incident. The officer took down the details of the incident and arranged a callback on Sunday the 21st of April at 5. I believe, redacted, to be an incredibly dangerous, morally reprehensible man who, if allowed to continue what he was doing with no repercussions, will end up assaulting or even killing one or more of my family members. He seems to have knowledge of the law and how to avoid prosecution which we unfortunately do not, as we have never needed to. I'm writing all of this down in desperation for some help with this ongoing situation. These past four years have been full of torment, anxiety, and stress. We are just a normal family who want to live a normal life. I would love to hear your advice and thoughts. About a month ago, maybe two, I moved out of my apartment and transferred to another building in the same complex. 
I'll admit I wasn't the perfect neighbor, but my downstairs neighbor used to complain about noise so much that I used to tiptoe in my own home and any little noise he would bang on the floor. When I first moved in, I gave him my number because I didn't want to be that upstairs neighbor. That was a big mistake. Every now and then, I would drop my phone or something, but it was never on purpose, and as soon as I would drop it, or the remote, or something, I would just hold my breath and wait for the banging to start. Anxiety would flare up so much that I went and got a ring camera because I was afraid he was going to come up there. The last straw was, I let my dog out on the balcony when I came home from work to get some fresh air, and she ended up peeing out there complete accident. Rightfully so, he was upset, but I apologized profusely and told him I would even come down and clean whatever dripped on his patio. He wouldn't listen to reason or anything. He just kept insulting me. He actually banged on my floor while I was sleeping. I once dropped an empty box that was so light it fluttered down and hit the floor again at about 8 p.m with force that would shake my whole apartment. On top of that, he used to argue with someone every night, loud as hell, and I never gave him any issues over it. Anyways, I've been moved out now for over a month, and I got a text from him last night while I was asleep. The stomping at around 2 a.m. just shows the lack of respect you have for any of your neighbors. It's pretty sad, man, to be honest. I guess he didn't know I moved out, but if someone else moved in, I'm kind of worried about them. This guy literally used to give me so much anxiety in my own home and gaslight me through texts. The complex waived a transfer fee for me to move to a different unit so I didn't have to stay for another 13 months that was on my lease. Because I went in and talked to them so much about it but I was so afraid of causing problems that I didn't ever want to file a formal complaint. What would you do? I live in a condo where a staircase goes down to my neighbor and our units. Our doors are side by side. Since we are halfway underground, each unit has an air circulation system that pumps clean air into each unit every few minutes. So when they are smoking in front of my door, the smoke is being pumped into my unit. Here is what happens. Around 5 a.m. is their first smoke of the day. I swear these people must be very sick or need to go to the doctor because they scream cough about every three seconds, waking me and my wife up. We then begin to smell the cigarette smoke in our own unit from the HVAC pump pumping the outside air in. I understand these people are lazy and completely inconsiderate, but the fact that they stand right in front of my door almost feels intentional. Like, are you that oblivious and rude to think that what you're doing doesn't disturb us? We rent, and smoking isn't allowed anywhere on the property. That's what it says in our lease, but many units have smokers. If I were to tell my landlord, one, I don't think anything would be done. Two, my neighbor would 100% know it was us that have complained, and these people might start a war, which living so close and having to walk by them sitting in front of our unit almost daily, I don't want to start a war. My wife and I have politely hinted and said things as we pass by like, wow, it really smells like cigarettes out here, or we have an early morning tomorrow, we need some sleep. None of this has worked. They either don't care or are oblivious. At this point, I don't know what to do and thought I would ask you and see if anyone has any suggestions. Again, I can't really complain to my landlord because he will confront them and blame us for complaining. I need help. I 
Alrighty, dear listeners, that's going to bring a close to these neighbors from hell. I do apologize for cutting this one a little short, but I didn't want to strain my voice since I'm slowly but surely getting it back. Before we part ways, I would like to give a shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Chrissy Elliott, Sugared Spite, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klimko, Anita V, Doba Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Colt Stonewolf, Luz Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's Niece, Denise S, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your continued support. For without you and your support, there would be no me or Back to Ashes. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.